If you saw the last hidden gems that are easy to platinum video and dropped a like on it, then message received and promise delivered, because here is another 5 hidden gems that are easy to platinum. If you didn't see the first one, then make sure to check it out after this list. Once again, the games are subjective, but I believe they are easy, and many others will do too. I'm going to push the boat out a little this time and go for 150 likes, and if you lovely people show this video enough love, I'll do a third part in the near future. Also, while you're here, if you are not subscribed already, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button, because I'll be posting a whole host of Platinum Trophy related content in the future. So, without further delay, let's get into the list. Zombie Soup is a top-down shooter combined with hack and slash action that follows Ricky, a bagpacker who falls asleep on the train and wakes up to find himself in an unfamiliar town, where he embarks on an adventure to save a kidnapped girl, as he shoots and dodges his way through hordes of bizarre creatures and challenging bosses. The release date for Zombie Soup is conflicting, as some places state September 2019, yet Metacritic has August 2023 although that may be the Nintendo Switch Physical Edition release. As things stand, there are no other physical editions for any other consoles, and I doubt that that will change soon, due to sales. Which is a shame, as I actually really enjoyed Zombie Soup, and it would appear that a high percentage of people that have played the game also did too. There is a total of 11 people who have this Platinum Trophy on PSNP, myself being the 11th, and unbeknown to me until editing, but I was the third fastest achiever. Not that it's that impressive at face value, but still a little something that made me smile, and had I have known earlier, I could have easily been the fastest achiever. There is currently no guides available online, but my personal opinion would be that it's roughly a 2 or 3 out of 10 difficulty. The game takes roughly 15 hours to get the Platinum, but if you're a skilled top-down shooter and find all the collectibles without any issues, then you could easily shave an hour or three off that time. The collectibles are probably one of the worst things about the game, because there is nothing really to signal where they are hidden, within. So if like me, you miss one, you'll have to run back through all of the five areas again. But while avoiding enemies, this is pretty simple and quite quick. The trophy list as a whole actually isn't too bad, and includes 16 trophies tied to base weapons, defeating all the bosses in under 5 minutes which is actually quite simple, finding all the collectibles which can be annoying if you miss one, unlocking every weapon and using every weapon to get at least one kill, completing the story, a few miscellaneous trophies and probably the most tedious one of the lot for unlocking every perk which it requires you to kill 9 bosses with all of the 5 different classes and grinding out some gold to purchase them. Cosmic Star Heroine is a science fiction role playing video game by Zeboid Games, with special thanks to its original Kickstarter. Released back in April 2017, Cosmic Star Heroine feels and pays homage to its inspirations of Fantasy Star and Cosmic Fantasy. Cosmic Star Heroine follows the story of Elisa Lasol a special agent working for a secretive agency for peace and intelligence on her mission to make the galaxy a safer place. With the player able to recruit up to 11 playable characters, you get to choose which party of four you wish to take into the turn-based combat against enemies. Additionally, each character has a specific pattern for gaining hyper turns, whereby their abilities are drastically more effective. The game has a rest feature that stops the player from spamming the most deadly attacks at every turn and encourages the player to set up buffs and debuffs, then using powerful abilities during those hyper turns to inflict monstrous amounts of damage. This game is probably the most known on the list and has a total of 1800 platinum earners on PSNP, but I'd imagine that's mainly due to the fact that the game is actually really good and the guide has it down as a 3 out of 10 difficulty, requiring just the one playthrough and taking roughly 15 hours. Using a guide is heavily advised with Cosmic Star Heroine, though, as there is a total of 19 missable trophies, of which some are related to side missions from the numerous recruits you'll gather, and others for finding and defeating specific enemies. There is also one difficulty related trophy for completing the game on Super Spy difficulty, but it's surprisingly not too bad and the guide tells you to start with this one first. All the other trophies are pretty much all story related and unmissable, and will naturally unlock as you delve deeper into the world of Cosmic Star Heroine. 
Just a quick heads up from me though, if you do use the guide on PSMP, there are heavy spoilers, so maybe steer clear of that for the time being. And also, even though this can be platinumed in a single playthrough, it is advised to do a second playthrough on the easiest difficulty for cleanup trophies. Released in October 2023, Johain the Parhelion Blaze in the Deep Blue is an official spin-off of the Love Live Sunshine, which admittingly I have not seen nor had I heard of before seeing this game on the PlayStation Store. Johain's fantasy world sets the stage for a 2D Metroidvania in which the player takes control of Johain as she ventures into a mysterious dungeon. While inside the dungeon you'll be exploring different biomes which are all connected to one another resulting in one huge dungeon which at first glance can seem daunting. While inside the dungeon you'll meet up with various friends from the anime series who allow you to use them in specific scenarios in order to help you progress, meaning at times there will be quite a fair bit of backtracking. One thing that makes this so much easier than usual Metroidvania games is that you can warp or transport to any found save room whenever you like. There is a lot of weapons and accessories to craft or cast as it's called in this game, but they are not required for the Platinum Trophy, although it will make the game a lot easier once you find a weapon that suits your style. As for the Platinum Trophy itself, as of this moment there are currently only 318 earners on PSNP, and there is a guide where it states the difficulty is a 3 out of 10, will require a single playthrough and will take just 10 hours. The trophy list itself is as simple as simple can be. Start the game, beat 8 bosses to rescue the 8 friendly NPCs, find 8 items unique to each one of those rescued NPCs and complete the game. Some bosses can be a little tricky, but if like me you upgrade weapons and accessories often and buy a lot of healing items, you can pretty much just take all the incoming damage while wailing on the enemies. Released back in 2021, Grow Song of the Evertree is a fantasy life and farming simulator where you play as the last alchemist apprentice in Alaria, a town located at the base of the Evertree in which your objective is to restore the Evertree back to its past glory and bring bustling towns back to Alaria. If you've played Disney's Dreamlight Valley and enjoyed it, then this is 100% the type of game for you. The first few days of in-game time will be mainly tutorials, but then the game lets go of the reins and leaves the player in complete control to tackle whichever objective they wish to take on next. You will have a limited amount of time each day, but there are no time limits on objectives or quests, and there are no speedrunning trophies, which means you can go at your own pace. The game does have a guide, and I would recommend giving it a glance over, because even though on PSNP it states the difficulty is a 2 out of 10, requires only the one playthrough, and takes roughly 20 hours, unfortunately there have been a couple of reports of game breaking bugs. Even so, it doesn't change the fact that the game is a delightful and relaxing experience, and you could become a platinum earner quite easily, along with the other 372 people on PSNP that have got this. To earn that platinum trophy, you will be required to do such things as building a set amount of buildings, unlocking new areas, talking to a set amount of villagers, and walking around a lot, most of which will come absolutely naturally while playing. There are a couple of miscellaneous trophies also, but they are very simple and don't require too much effort. Made of Scare was released in July 2020 and is probably the most difficult platinum on this list as it hosts a 4 out of 10 difficulty, requires 3 playthroughs and takes on average 20 hours to get the platinum trophy. Made of Scare is a first person survival horror game set in 1898 on the imaginary Scare Island. The player takes control of Thomas Evans in search of his lover Elizabeth who is being held against her will by her family for sinister purposes that become more articulated as the game progresses. The reviews are very, very mixed, with some people thinking it's a horror classic and others complaining mainly of the poor enemies within the game. 
While yes, I agree the enemies are slow and easily avoided, the setting, ambience and music are all fantastic and never let you relax as you make your way through the hotel, solving puzzles, all in your quest to rescue Elizabeth. Trophy wise, it's a right mixed bag, including trophies where the player will be required to make Thomas hold his breath 50 times, playing the piano, petting the dog, playing the piano some more, and listening to all the speakerphone messages. Using a guide is certainly advised, especially for the second and third playthroughs, as there are some missables amongst difficulty related trophies, and probably the two hardest trophies being that you can only save one time or less and you need to complete the game without being hit. As I said at the start, it's a 4 out of 10, but 222 people didn't have any issue in getting this Platinum Trophy, and the percentage on PSNP suggests that 1 in every 10 people who have picked this game up went on to get the Platinum Trophy. So what did you think of the list? Do you imagine you will be picking any of these games up in the future? Don't forget to leave a like if you want to see a part 3, and subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you next time.